Hi, I'm Dr. Uh, Jim Pritchett. I'm at my office here in downtown Seattle and um, I'm talking today about uh, hip replacement surgery. Uh, basically a high demand type, different way of doing hip replacement and there are many ways we can do it. A typical hip replacement I'm showing right here. This is a, a pretty standard type hip replacement. It's a, got a stem that goes in your femur the replacement ball itself, and that's a pretty standard type ball. 90% of Americans would have had a hip replacement just like that uh, last year. A good way to go, a common, straightforward operation. In fact, hip replacement was declared operation of the century. Admittedly, that was the last century, but it's still holding up uh, well this century too. It, the socket piece looks kind of like that, and then the socket diameter would be a matching to the ball, and uh, put these in, people can use them pretty darn well. The limitations have been a few things. The ball being smaller than your natural ball, there's always a sense, would it be a feel like your normal hip and it's stable. For most people, it works perfectly fine. Two thirds of patients that uh, come to any orthopedic surgeon with a bad hip are older and they uh, can get by with some limitations. And then we have some younger patients which in my practice is most of the people coming in who, who don't want any limitations. And they might be asking for a hip that will do just anything. They could be a circus performer, an acrobat, Pilates instructor, yoga instructor, athlete of any uh, type or description. And they ask me, can you fix my hip in a way that I have no limitations whatsoever? And that's for sports, we call those adventure sports. They're sports that are beyond what most people do, but they're what some people want to do. The other limitation has been sexual function. That's been underestimated in our uh, literature, but now there's information coming out. P questions are being asked. This subject, which in the past wasn't discussed much, is. When, when it came up, we found that 40 to 75 percent of our patients were limited in sexual activity from the hip problem they had, and a good many still were in, as far as position they could assume. Mostly the women, uh, it turns out, but, but some men too, because different uh, positions have to feel stable and confident and pain-free to function well for you sexually. So four questions are commonly asked. It, uh, is there a limitation? Does it limit what you do? Uh, is there any pain involved? Does it limit the frequency of sexual activity? And we ask those questions before and after the operation now. Turns out that uh, a hip um, of the standard type would still often have limitations. Uh, there might be less than before, but, they, but there would still be some. There are w other designs you can use to, uh, to get around that. And this would be an example of a hip and all I've done, all you can see here is that the ball, it's, it's bigger. It's um, half again to, to, in some instances, even twice as big, depending on how big the natural hip was. And then the ball is a double ball instead of a single. So that's a difference. This type of hip, and again, it would f fit into the socket. This, by the simple measure of making a double ball from a single, will then allow the hip to assume any position that you want, any position at all. You don't have to limit it whatsoever. It can accommodate it. And it, the way it can do that is it has two places to move. The ball moves against the socket, and one ball moves on the other. So that those two, rather than just one, uh, freedom area for movement will allow the stability of the hip and its range of motion to both increase. So we've been offering this hip in, in certain uh, selected circumstances, typically a young person who needs a large range of motion or someone whose stability has been compromised from some other way. They might have had a congenital abnormality where the shape of their hip leads to some lack of confidence. and. Um, when we looked at doing this, we found out it works virtually every time. Drawback of using it, however, is you have to 
plan it, assemble it, and you have to, in your mind's eye, and often with x-ray help, match the dimensions of your patient. If you're going to get it to work exactly right so their brain and muscles will drive it in all the correct directions so it works perfectly, it's a very demanding operation. And the implants um, require a little bit of intraoperative assembly and they're a little bit more expensive. So it's not a uh, hip replacement. I think will take over for everybody all the time, but it has some advantages. And the recent paper that we published on this was called a tripolar hip replacement or biarticulate hip replacement that's useful for unlimited uh, sexual activity and adventure sports are possible with it. My name is Anya Franchek and I'm from Missoula, Montana. Um, I have a husband and two kids, seven and ten. Um, and I love living, I live in Missoula because of the amenities. Um, you know, I can mountain bike five minutes from my house. I can ski 15 minutes from my house. Um, I am a school counselor at, at one of the high schools there. And um, I, it's a great life. You know, I live there and raise my kids and love to recreate and play and play in the rivers that run through town. And um, so that's, that's kind of me in a nutshell. So I, um, was diagnosed with Perthes disease when I was eight. So my first hip that I had uh, hip reconstruction was when I was in second grade. Um, and then I had another massive surgery in eighth grade and they had rebuilt it at that point. And so I have had a compromised hip my whole life. Uh, that's all I ever knew. Um, and then since my last hip, re hip reconstruction in eighth grade, it had been maybe 20 some years and I was just starting to limit, it was, I was getting more and more limited in my activities. So um, I used to be able to do quite a bit more things before I had this surgery. Um, well, let me step there. <laughs> so, um, about, you know, 25 years after my last surgery, I had just gotten to a point where I had compromised my activities so much that I decided I just couldn't do that anymore. Um, I got to the point where I couldn't do a long walk, I couldn't do a hike, I would just pay for it miserably. Um, lots and lots of pain in my hip and then I, th I was compensating so much that I had pain in my knee and my lower back. I don't even think I really even realized how bad my range of motion was. I didn't have any external range of motion so I could not sit um, cross-legged. Um, I couldn't move my my right leg out across like this in any way. So um, I had very limited range of motion. I, you know, I could, there, I would try to go to a yoga class and there was many, many things I could not do. For one, it would just, it would, was really, it would get really stiff and sore and painful. And I couldn't, yeah, I had no external rotation. So I was limited in, in what I could do with sexual, different sexual positions. It had, my whole life I had kind of been like that. So I don't even think I realized how bad it was until after my surgery and I could do all these things. Um, but it was definitely something that bothered me. Uh, more than anything, it was just the, the pain and the stiffness afterward which I didn't realize till after my surgery how limited I had been before with that. So, you know, I'm able to, you know, rotate my hips out and they have no limitations in sexual, sexual positions or activity. No, not at all. And again, I think that it's so remarkable the difference, be, be, you know, from before my surgery to after my surgery that I just am, like blown away sometimes on how I can sit or how it can move. It's the best hip I've ever had. Um, so I, no, I don't, I don't feel any limitations. I think especially now I'm about a year and a half out from my surgery and the stronger I get, the better it even is. It's been awesome. Um, yeah, I can, um, hike again. I can even do a little jogging, which I could have never done before. Um, biking, I feel a lot better biking. I was having lots of lower back pain and I think I've been just learning to really move differently with this new hip. Also, my physical therapist has worked with me to kind of reteach me how to walk and it, my, this new hip allows me to move that way. Whereas before I I, I don't think I could have even moved that way, moved, rotated my hips the way I, he wants me to um, because I didn't have that 
about ability with the old hip that it was so compromised. So um, the, acti the activities are awesome and I, I'm in, not in any pain. I have a backpacking trip planned this summer with my kids, which I, I could have never done before this surgery. A couple weeks out from the surgery, I, I looked at my leg and was like, oh my God, it's short or something's wrong. And, uh, and Dr. Pritchett reassured me and his staff that I, I would be fine. And um, so did my physical therapist. And as I've gotten stronger and I've been able to um, learn how to move it differently, yeah, it's, it's perfect. I don't notice anything. I'm more than, more than happy with it. Did I have any concerns about coming to Seattle from Montana for my hip surgery? And I would say that I, I thought about that, but after I researched Dr. Pritchett and the work he had done, I, was, I felt that it was definitely worth the inconvenience of not having it done in my hometown. And Dr. Pritchett's office and staff was super accommodating. Um, you know, they were always, they're used to working with people from out of town, so his appointments were always on time. The office was very pleasant with that. Coming to your office is actually very, very pleasant compared to the um, the orthopedic office that I visit, have visited in Missoula, which is busy and just a lot, a lot of people. They have a lot of docs there. Um, so, you know, just coming here and feeling like I was able to have um, the attention I needed from you, that was always appointments were on time. Um, it made it really easy if I was flying in to be able to do that appointment or catch a flight afterward. You know, when I think about my age and being 42 and having a hip replacement, honestly, I'm so grateful <laughs> because um, I was pretty miserable before the surgery. I felt I felt like 20 years older. You know, I ha like I said, I had such pain in the joint, um, my, I couldn't run and play with my kids, I couldn't do the activities that they were getting older and able to do. And so being able to get this surgery and feel like, you know, imagining what my 40s will look like, I'm just so grateful for that opportunity and grateful to Dr. Pritchett for giving me this opportunity. It's the best hip that I've ever had. I, I'm pain free. I'm able to do things that I could not do before. Um, I'm really optimistic and excited about the future and the activities and the things I can do with my kids. Um, so it's, I really have zero regrets or don't even think twice about it. And he's also given me um, confidence that as I get older, I have options. So I will be able to be active most of my life. So I really am hopeful about that. And feel, I trust him, I trust Dr. Pritchett. <laughs> you know, I've talked to people who have said, who've had hip replacements and said, I wish I had done that earlier. And my hip has exceeded my expectation by far. I, I just knew that I was pretty miserable and I was starting to be able to not do the things that, the activities that make me happy. Um, you know, like I said, I'm really active and I love being outdoors and, it was starting to take those things away from me uh, and it was making it harder for me to do those things, my hip. So I just knew that I was pretty miserable um, and I just hoped and prayed that it, would, that it would be better afterward. And I think that it's a situation where you don't realize how bad it is until you have the other side. And so having this hip replacement has exceeded my expectations. It was a long journey to get strong again um, but now that I'm there and I'm on that other side, I'm about a year and a half out, it is just like I'm continually blown away by what I can do and not have any pain afterward, just to be pain free.